Hello and welcome back to Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. So, all the custom courtiers are now in. We can start getting to business. There are a lot of them and we're going to go through each one in this episode. This episode is going to be very much focused on them and what we can do to set them up. Quite a lot of people have asked for their characters to be married, so we will see what we can do. Right, first of all, we're going to have a look at our council. Before we go through all of the characters individually because, well, the council is going to be the easiest place. Oh yeah, the only thing that I have not added in is if you had like a whole family connections thing, mainly because that is a lot of extra work. This currently took me about six or seven hours to actually put all of them in as they are, and it would probably add like another two or three hours onto that if I was to start putting in all the families, so, you know, they're there in spirit, but in actuality they're uh, not there, just because of time. And how much I have in a day. So, Castilian. We need a new Castilian. Castilian is based off of stewardship. So, how about we put a uh, Dinald uh, Fire in here. He's also an architect, so he's probably very good at... Uh, well, the Castilian kind of deals with day-to-day -day administration. There's some building work. He, he seems reasonable. He's shrewd. Yeah, we'll go with him. Right. Let's... Um, what we're going to send him to do... Uh, oversee administration of the province, improve defenses, pacify the province, um, or improve the holding. Well, we could do improve the holding. Oversee the province. That would give us an extra 15% tax. That would be not that much money, actually. Well, let's go and send him in to uh, improve the holding. Uh, we can't send him to do that? Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, like, it won't let us click on this little holding to do that. As far as I can see. It does kind of light it up, though. Does that mean it's working, or... Um, I don't know. We'll go for a different one, just, uh... Yeah, see, it, go, it should go green like that, and then he should appear on the province. Uh, let's, uh... Hmm. Let's just go for Oversee, then. If the uh, other option isn't working. That's fine. We didn't need just a car. Justicar has to be somebody with diplomacy. He wants to become Justicar, Faith the Seven, Lannis uh, Hasterton. Yep, seems reasonable. He wait. Yes, it's based off of diplomacy. I was think I was thinking his stewardship's not the higher, not higher, but no, he will definitely fit in there. Uh, what are we gonna send him to do? Probably improve relations with our direct lord because he doesn't like us. That would seem like the most sensible thing to do with him. There we go. And uh, treasurer is still off doing stuff. Do we want uh, Ricario to be our treasurer? Um, I mean, he was our treasurer when we started. Do we still... Have we got another option here? We could have Arwen, uh, our wife. She's probably not the best option, though. Could have Warwick Westford do it. He's a uh, six better, but... Uh, hmm. Ricaro. He might be better leading our armies, to be honest, Ricaro. Given that that's what we want him to do. So, we're, we're going to fire him even though he's not going to like it. There we go. We're going to keep James on as captain of our fleet, mainly because he's an important, he's a powerful vassal, so he's already got his position. And there's not really a great reason to remove him. It's not like he's unsuited to the role. He also, um, you know, this is a role that suits him. Like, it, it's his best role. Spymaster, I think, is probably going to stay the same. Yep, we don't really have anyone who's significantly better at spy mastering. Maester, obviously going to stay the same. Drowned Man. Aha, we do have one. Ethan. We didn't have him last time. He wasn't working. But I believe that's because his culture wasn't technically ironborn. His religion was uh, was broken as well. So, that works. We'll put Ethan in charge. What are we going to send him to do? Build zeal. Uh, increasing your piety and possibly attracting some holy warriors. If you don't use these troops for raids or wars of conquest, they'll get angry at you and you will lose piety. All right, so they give us extra raiders. Perform charity just gives us charity, and that converts. Uh, well, we'll build some zeal, because I like having the extra troops uh, randomly coming in. Do we want this guy to be organizing a raid still, or do we want him to maybe be doing something else? Like, do we not have a child? We do have a child, and I think we could probably start training children in our capital. Cool. That seems reasonable. Uh, as for my council itself. It's all filled up, I think. Yep. What have we got? We've got one loyalist, one zealot, a couple of pragmatists, and a couple of glory hands. 
What does this actually mean? A Dlory Hound Counselor will push the realm to make prestigious advances for Dlory. They will oppose attacking weak neighbours, but uh, be against attacking more powerful opponents. Yeah, they will not care much for the reason of the war as long as it's strengthened into the realm. Pragmatists uh, look for the path of least resistance, so they'll do the exact opposite of the previous people. Loyalists will do what I say, and Zealots will do um, religious wars they'll uh, be happy for. Yeah. If religious war targets are available, then they may oppose other targets. There we go. And then, of course, Malcontent will just directly oppose. Cool. Um, now, we could put in some minor titles here. We need some more bodyguards. Let's see who we got. So, Ricaro, definitely. Who else are we going to put in charge? Um, how about... Well, if we just sort it by Marshall here. Rhaegal, another uh, Dothraki. Yeah, we'll just have all of our bodyguards be Dothraki. That would be interesting. I don't think we have enough, though. Um, Malus seems reasonable as well. And then also... Uther was the last one. There we go. Uther. All got positions. All got positions. We got our commanders. We're not going to change them right now. Master Bow, Master Blade, Champion. These are just um, things for people who we have, you know, shown themselves to be great as a as is a cup bearer. Okay. At least my Leisure's Council. That's not important to look at. We're not on our Leisure's Council, are we? Uh, no, no, we're not. Cool. Right, let's start going through all the characters, and I'm going to do a little bit of their backstory as we go through, as that was requested, and it doesn't seem ridiculous. If you didn't have much of a backstory, we'll, uh, I'll have, I've got my own re recreations based on what you've told me. But, uh, you know, a lot of people did have a backstory of some length. We're not going to go through them all, like, in detail, because a lot of them were very long, and this episode is, uh, probably going to go over anyway. So... Let's go for... Well, do we start right at the start? We already kind of went through James and the others. Like, the first four. So we're not going to go through them again. Aside from we're going to go through them when we look at the... Uh, yeah, I suppose we should go through them first when looking at the people who are going to marry off and seeing what else they want them to do. So, let's start with uh, James. I believe he'll just do whatever he wants because he's actually our vassal. And he's got... Uh, He's married Freynia. Okay, cool. And he, yes, he already has a son, Warlag. Who uh, doesn't have anything special about him, but he's around. Let's uh, go back to our court. We also have Rakaro, who really doesn't like the fact that we just fired him from the council, which is unfortunate, but uh, we can live with it. Um, damn it, he's, on, he's got no religion. Do all of our first four have no religion? That's going to be... I'll be back in uh, just one second. Right, we are back. James is now Iron God. Fantastic. Ricaro is now Iron God. And um, Meredith is now Faith the Seven. And Aegor was actually, for some reason, correct. I have no idea why he, he out of all of them, was just correct. But whatever. Let's uh, have a look at Ricaro. So... We want to, do we want to marry him off to someone? This seems reasonable as a uh, thing for us to want to do. Um, we could assemble a mercenary company with him being in charge of it. That would definitely be something we could consider doing. Uh, how much does it cost? It costs 50 gold to start up. So maybe in a bit we might start a mercenary company. But we won't do that just yet. Let's um, arrange him a marriage. Let's see who we've got an offer. Now what kind of person would he be looking for? I don't know. Um, I don't know what his traits would lead towards. Maybe I'll know it when I see it kind of thing. Um, presumably he'd want somebody who's good at mar- I don't know. Marshall? Is that, is that a logical thing? Uh, he's charitable. He's lustful. Patient. Diligent. Wrath. Proud. I don't know. I have absolutely no idea who we'd be looking at. Maybe somebody, um, about Talia here. She's ambitious, proud, temperate, which isn't necessarily against, ruthless, and charitable. Talia, would you like to marry Rakaro? Yes, yes you would. 
Cool. That's that set up. Let's uh, head back into our court here. Meredith. Now, we, I believe the reason she couldn't marry previously is because she had no religion. As in that her religion was not Faith the Seven, it was no religion. It means there might actually be some more options here. So now she'd want a matrilineal marriage to somebody of high birth. So probably high rank. Um, are these just people in our court? Can we find anyone further afield? These are just people in our court, yeah. We can find fine people further afield. Let's go for... We're looking for gender. We're looking for a man who is not in prison, not married, not a ruler. Who is... Not my religion, and is I don't know. Culture doesn't matter. And then it would be they'd have to be an adult, and then we're probably looking for someone just a really high marshal who is uh, not current. I'm still not marrying the uh, courtiers to each other. I think that's um, like we'll do that in maybe one generation down, or maybe like a couple of episodes in. Just want to try and get them having their own dynasties for just now. It's not really an issue because we have mostly male uh, courtiers, but uh, you know. Um, how about Ke oh, I'm only searching our realm. That'd be it. I was like, why do we only have these awful like? Uh, why why is there nobody with much better options? Uh, it's because we're only looking in our realm. How about Sir Humphrey? Oh, commander of the Red Watch. Is that by any chance a mercenary company? That is indeed a mercenary company. Nope, he will not consider offers from infidels. Okay, so he won't consider offers from us even though he's the right religion. Okay, so we're only looking for my religion group. Uh, that is fine. Wait, I forgot to check. Are we the right religion? Yes, we, we are indeed the right religion. That would be worrying if we were not the right religion. Right, um... So, drowned god. How about Eric? Marry Eric. He's very good at. He's an inspiring leader. He's got a siege commander. He's a bit zealous, but mm, I suppose zealous would probably discard him because he's not. Uh, you know, he wouldn't like marrying someone who's faith of the seven. Marin. Uh, he is a master at battle. He's an organizer. He's a ho bit of a holy warrior, so he won't, probably wouldn't mind going and fighting people over there. He's brave, temperate, a little bit shy, a little bit envious. Does that work for us? I think that could work for us. Yeah. Maron, would you like to marry Meredith? Matrilineally. She is unimportant. Wow, that's 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 a little rude there, Maron. Uh is he important? He's he's a lowborn and he's she's he's like, you're unimportant. I don't care. Well, um That's interesting. So if he won't marry away. I guess it's because he's a sworn shield and commander. If we got somebody who didn't have a title or anything that'd be better. Hmm. I don't know. How about Ravos? He is drowned. Is that... He's dr Oh, he's chased. That's the, that's the problem with him. It's like, what's the problem with him? Um, how about Lodos? He's a commander. Commander... Oh, Hagen. Aegon is trusting, shy, ruthless, diligent. He could possibly do. I just want to see if somebody who has nothing would marry her. Uh, no. Okay, so she's impossible to be married unless it's to someone in our court. So, we'll uh, see how that goes. We'll leave her for just now. I suppose we could just marry her to someone in our court. That works. Right, uh, maybe we'll marry her to Agor, because we were looking at Agor originally as someone who could marry her. Like except matrilineal, yes. That seems to work. Go with that. Done. Right, next one. Agor, done. Uh, we, we have just done him. Let's go for Mayford. Mayford is somebody, is back, we're into the backstory bit here, this is going to take some time. Uh, Mayford drunkenly met Urus while attempting to raise his family up to nobility. So, uh, yep. He is, um, a bit drunken. He's, uh, lustful. He'll probably, we're, we're gonna marry him off as well. We're probably gonna marry everyone off, just, uh, in an attempt to actually get some, uh, lines happening here. So, who does he want to marry? I don't know, probably a similar kind person, maybe, if we have a drunkard? Nope. Kind? We have one kind person who is also brave, a little bit humble, a little bit honorable. I don't see him being against this. 
You can marry Falsy. Perfect. Next one, we have Dinald Fire, who is an architect who has been forced to work for us. So, um, we will find him somebody to marry. Hmm, <clears throat> who's he going to be looking for? I don't know, he's a bit craven, arbitrary, I don't know what that would lead us to. He's shrewd. Hmm, I don't know. Let's uh, have a look at our options here. We're probably going to run out of people before we run out of, uh, as in we're going to run out of people who can be married before we actually run out of uh, anything else. So, skilled fighter, fashionable, deceitful, temperate, cruel, probably not. Um, an imbecile who is gregarious, deceitful, stubborn, and content. I don't know. Um, trying to find somebody who... I, I don't entirely know what I'm looking for, but I have a rough idea in my head. It's probably somebody who's... Uh, nope. Actually, that idea has just disappeared out of my head. Um, I suppose if, he, if he's being forced to work for us, it might be someone who nobody else wants to marry. That's my, so maybe Talia would work because she's an imbecile. I don't know. Does that work? I, that could work. We'll go, with, we'll go with that. Or Tala. You can marry Tala. Yes. Fine. Let's go for the next one. Laios the Blind. Laios was blinded in a bar fight. Um, hmm. Okay. So he probably wouldn't care about looks. So if there's an ugly person, maybe. Uh, that's, that's my log. No, nope, no uglies. Why, why does she pop up with ug? Oh, she's haughty. Oh, okay. I, don't, I have no idea what that does in terms of gameplay. What else might he not care about? This isn't in order at all. This is quite definitely not the right order. Okay. Um. Not entirely sure. Maybe someone who's older, because he's a little bit older than the rest of them. There don't appear to be that many older people. We could have a look and um, see if he, anyone will want to marry him. So we're looking for a woman who is in my religion group and my culture group. Let's have a look at this. Uh, not in prison, not married, not a ruler, not an adult. Probably not a great house. Just reset that list. Go to the top of it. 60. See, uh, here's the problem with uh, trying to marry people off at the start of the game. Is that you have a bunch of younger people and then you have a bunch of older people. You have nobody who's in the middle part of it. How about the oldest person we have available? A bit slothful, humble, stubborn, a little bit craven. That's fine. You you can marry. Um, Laios. There we go. Next one we have is... Brandon Wilson. He is an ironborn bastard who has wildling heritage. Who was taken in by the Saltcliffs, uh... At some time ago. So. Let's. Uh, let's uh, marry him off. What else has he got? He is. Lustful. Proud. Content. And greedy. So. I again have no idea where we're going with this. But we will find him somebody nice. He should be on the left hand side of this. There, there we go. That works. Whatever. Um, Age. We're looking for. I don't know. Who are we looking for? Maybe... It has to be somebody who's not already married as well. How about Asha? Asha is just a family person. Eric Trout. It kind of likes books. A bit honourable. No. That's fine. There's nothing against her. We're not going to look too much into it in the first kind of generation or two. It's just so that we actually get some people uh, marrying down. We have... Lannis Hasterton. He is a bastard of a bastard of House Rain, and he took his own name in an attempt to acquire glory. He met Urus on a drunken night, as everybody appears to meet Urus. It's uh, just the way he meets people. So he would um, presumably like to have somebody who's um, like higher born that he'd want to marry if he's looking for glory. How about Margaret? Uh, she's zealous, um, so probably wouldn't marry him because he's Faith the Seven. How about Jonella? Um, yeah, okay, we'll go with Jonella. 
It'll arrange the betrothal. They'll all say yes. Cool. Right. Next one down is Regal. He is another Dothraki. He's a very tall and good fighter. He, um... Yes, apparently he saw weakness in Urus and found him easily manipulable. Easy to manipulate. So, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he'd be looking for a chance at some extra glory, perhaps? He's, um... Yeah, let's see what we've got. We could marry him to Margaret. Although, yeah, he's drowned god, she's drowned god, zealous. He's, he's humble. Does anything against his thing become... He's proud. That would probably clash a little bit. Um... I don't know. How about uh, Tala? She is ambitious. She's proud, ruthless as well. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Tala. He's currently considering another offer from us. Okay, well, that tells me that we have to go forward exactly one day. Until we get all of these things. Maybe two days? Three. I'm just waiting for all the events to fire all at once, so. Be ready. Wait, have they fired already? No. Okay. Just keep going. Yes, uh, you accept that these people should get married. We'll just uh, let this happen as it happens. Set that these people get married, set that these people get married. There we go, some more, some more. Yes, Arthur accepted. Oh, that's a peasant's revolt ended. Yep, and that's enough. We can now go back to looking at our court. I told you this was going to be a long episode. Uh, so we did, did we do Raggle? Yes, he was going to marry Tala. Um... Uh, there's some more people. Interesting. I think it generated some more there. Uh, yeah, it must have generated some more. Because there appears to be more than last time. And Tala is not existing. Okay, fine. How about Gretchen? She's ruthless. Oh, she's humble. Again. Um, how about... Well, we were, look we were looking for someone ambitious for him. Ambitious? Nope. Okay, I guess all the ambitious people are gone. I guess we maybe marry Tal off to someone else. Um, how about... Um, yeah, maybe someone younger who would be more easily manipulated. Easy to manipulate, possibly. I don't know. Oh no, how about Brella? Brella will do. She's ruthless, a bit temperate, you know, a bit shy, a bit selfish. But I think that could work. I, I think the ruthlessness could be seen. I don't know. We'll go with that. Marry. Be happy. Right, uh, next one would be Ethan. Ethan is our drowned man. Ethan, uh, the only thing we have about him is he is known as Woodbrusher. And take of that what you will. Right, next one is Lindsay of the Stone Crows. Who um, is the brother of one of the mountain clansmen. I'm presuming that he probably came here for the chance of a good fight. So, uh... Let's see if we can marry him off. Is there anyone who wants to marry him? Let's uh, go for this. What we're we looking for, maybe. Um, someone who likes dogs? Somebody who's uh, brave? I don't know. Let's go for... I have no idea. Again. Let's, um, let's go for somebody presumably not zealous. Yeah. How about Megan? She is family person, she's trusting, she's a little bit cruel, she's kind of scholarly. She might like that he's a little bit different, he's a little bit, he's from the mountains, so she might be like, ooh, can I, so it might be from like a studying point of view, she wants to, I don't know, study him, I don't know. I'm trying to make stories behind this, but uh, some of them are a little bit weaker than others. Uh, Justin Benson is the next one. He is an old drinking buddy of Urus's. He uh, came to the islands when he heard that Urus was uh, in charge. Like, he left the islands a long time ago, and then he came back hearing, Oh, my old buddy Urus is in charge. So, let's uh, find him someone to marry. He is also an architect. So, uh, I don't know if that gives anything. Any clues. Maybe, um, maybe he can marry Margaret. He is an ironborn, and he's actually proper ironborn. Yeah. There we go. You two can marry. 
Next one we're looking at is Malus. Malus claims that uh, he he's come from a land, you know, far away, and there's talk of Targaryens and Blackfire and all that kind of stuff. But no, nobody really believes a word he says. He's a little bit of a lunatic. So um, I don't think anybody is particularly going to marry him if I, if I had to guess. But we'll have a look. Uh, let's see who we've got. We would have... What kind of person would want to marry him? He's also zealous, but he is zealous for the drowned gods. I don't know what we're looking at for him. Probably somebody who's willing to, keep, to cope with the fact that he's a lunatic. If he was to marry. Um... I don't know what trait that would be, but, uh, um, I don't know. Just keep, uh, having a look here. Do we see one that pops out, like, pops out and says, this is him. This is who should marry. How about, oh, wait, we're already marrying off Megan, aren't we? Uh, no, yes. Yes, we are. Okay. I was thinking because he was trusting, she might believe his story. Uh, there doesn't appear to be anyone for him right now. Um, I don't know. We'll just marry him off to somebody who doesn't make sense then. Who doesn't make full sense then. How about, um, you know, just this nice person. She's a little bit arbitrary. Maybe a little bit cynical. So maybe she's, um, she doesn't quite believe what he says. But she, maybe she's intrigued by it. Like, she's still intrigued by the story. I don't know. We'll go with that. Next one is Ronald, if I've got the list right. Yes, Ronald Estimant. He took revenge on his father, and he was, uh, he is a bastard who took revenge on his father, and then he found a good hiding place in Saltliff, as many people have done. So, we will marry him off. He is actually of a house as well. Um, I don't know, what else is he? lustful, he's uh, proud. Maybe he can marry uh, Fernie. She's fashionable. She's uh, a little bit deceitful. But uh, still a bit cruel. Does he have anything against cruel? He has nothing against cruel, in which case, I, I guess that means he's 100% for it. He's a little bit deceitful himself. You will marry Fernie. Right. And I need to move page on my list of notes here. We have Warwick who is a realm traveller who decided he quite liked drinking with Urus. Um, Warwick, there we go. A realm traveller who decided he did quite like drinking with Urus. So, let's uh, find him someone to marry. He is uh, unfortunately getting some of the people at the end of this list, but that's fine. Uh, I need to make sure that they're not already married or marrying. How about Falsy? She's stubborn just uh, he's also just he's a little bit humble he's a little bit uh, proud but maybe that works out for them yes cool and then the very last one well the last two will be Uther Tyrell who um, you know some people have said they've seen him before they get weird visions of uh, you know green and red apples when he's around but uh, then they realize he's He's just a distant cousin of the Tyrells from the mainland. Right. Uh, let's marry him off to... Um, Brella? Are we already marrying some I think we're already marrying someone to Brella. Yeah. Um, we might need to refresh the list again, actually. Ryla? She's a bit rude. She's trusting. She's wroth. Ertrude. Nothing that says that she shouldn't marry Ur um, Uther. Ryla. No, because he's currently considering another offer. Right, we'll reset the list again. Uh, we'll go at speed three. There is a Westlander Civil War. Cool. We'll just wait until we get like a whole bunch of marriage stuff. Uh, people are starting to accept Aegon's peace offers. A whole bunch of people accepted. Right, let's go back to uh, Uther. Uther, Uther, Uther. Uther, right. And we will marry him off to Ryla. Yes. Done. And last but not least, we have Pete, I think. 
um, if I go all the way down here. He's the last one on the list, I think. Uh, yeah. And he is another drinking buddy of Urus's. We'll marry him off to... Um, Gisela? Oh, she's just Chase. That's probably not a good option. How about... Um, how about to Jen? To Jean? Jen? Yes. Marry her off, and now we'll run through until we finish getting events. Oh, a scout fa has spied a coastal fishing village and says there is much plunder and many women to be found there. Let the reaving begin. It was hard fought and few of our men were lost, but none can withstand the might of the Ironborn, and we have claimed our iron prize today, winning our plunder from those weak people. A successful raid. Fantastic. More people were married. And we can keep going with our reaving. And you get a whole bunch of marriage stuff happening. We're at rest after a day of much pillage and raping, where I showed that I am clearly the most daring of the Ironborn, who can kill, plunder, and drink the most. Aegir Rivers disagrees, however, and challenges me to a finger dance to prove my manliness. I accept. Perhaps my decision to accept Aegir Rivers' challenge was not wise. As the axes flew to and fro, he was clearly uh, more assured and quicker. I had to give in after losing some fingers for fear of my life. Okay, a chance of nothing bad happening, a chance of being wounded, a chance of being maimed. Uh, please don't be maimed, that's just a death sentence. Ooh, what happened? Nothing happened. Fantastic. We're fine. Uh, we're absolutely fine. Someone has been appointed our regent still. Oh, we got a new regent. Uh, Warwick. For some reason, Meredith is no longer a regent. Is she dead? What happened to her? Um... Yeah, what happened to Meredith? I'm uh, now very interested. Meredith... Uh, right. Of course, I need to reset all of this. So any, 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 uh, any, any. So look for Meredith. Oh, she's she died. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, she would have been married to Agor Rivers. Yeah, died under suspicious circuit. Did you murder her? Right, that, that's that's just not on at all. Right. Um, well. Yeah, some people have managed to die before we can finish all the marriages. That's uh, interesting. Much plunder and many women to be found in this village. Let's uh, see. Oh. Okay, Aegon, the king of Westeros, has approved the institution of uh, chattel slavery law. Oh, so slavery is allowed now. Fantastic. Well, I mean... Obviously not fantastic, but you know, fantastic for us. Um, in terms of our situation. The North declared the Northern Westerosi War of Emancipation on King Aegon of Westeros. Okay. The raid was a resounding failure. The men of the fields were much stronger than we thought. Many of our reavers were slain and the dishonor we have brought upon the Ironborn is plain to see. Oh, that's not good. Are all the marriages fin uh, finished? Um... So May Mayford is married. I'm just going to go on through. I see we could do spouse like this. So, spouse. Spouse, 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 spouse. Betrothed. Not married. Did we not find him someone to marry? Um, right. I guess we never actually did Regal. Unless, um, some f unless we're still waiting for the event. Uh, was he not marrying Gretchen? Yes. Okay. Um, apart from Regal, we have Ethan, who is a priest, therefore cannot marry. Married, married, uh, married, 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 married. Pete is not married for some reason. Okay. False. Was that who he was marrying? I think it was. Right. Let's keep going. My lord, thank you for having me in your household these past three, uh, these past years, but I must serve a higher purpose now. Um... Lord Reaver Vikrin has accepted me into his service, and I shall leave for Pike immediately. Yours, Malus. Oh, well, good luck. The Ironborn longships cut through the water swift and sure. Hence, we have successfully pursued a small merchant fleet. If we were to attack and pay our iron price for the cargo, we would gain much and more. Um, attack. Yes. Uh, they shall get married, they shall get married. That should be everybody married. And I'm going to end this very long episode here. 
thank you for watching. Uh, there are a couple of things I'd like to add just right at the end about custom uh, uh, courtiers. There are just two th two limitations I'm going to add from what we previously had based on how what took me a lot more time than I thought it would. Um, cust uh, custom sigils. They're very cool, but uh, I'd prefer if you were to want a custom sigil for you to just be of a house that already exists because it's a lot easier to do that. It means I don't have to open up Photoshop and edit files and, you know, think I'd prefer it just to be like that if you're going to do it. Anyway, that's that one. Friendships. Um, I'm fine with you being friends with people in the game, but I'd prefer if you were friends with people who are landed. Because if they're landed, I can just uh, switch to playing as them and then use the friend console command, which takes about maybe 10 seconds instead of having to edit the files which could take like 10 minutes so those are the only two limitations but thank you for watching if you've made it through this episode uh very well done and i will see you next time goodbye